This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. Hello there, welcome back to an episode of Anime with Alvin. Now this is a special episode because we have a special guest today. She just came out with her cookbook called Make It Japanese. She is one of my closest friends and she is one of the most talented and funniest people I've ever met. Her name is Rie. We've been co-workers and friends for many 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 years and gone through many many adventures together both in the culinary and video world. You might have seen her on YouTube making a lot of Japanese foods and I'm honored to have her in the studio today. Her cookbook is filled with beautiful, simple, and delicious Japanese recipes and one of them happens to be melon pan, a confectionery from Japan that is essentially a soft milk bread bun with a cracklin cookie-like topping. It doesn't taste like melon at all, but I think the word comes from the fact that it kind of looks like a melon because of the crackled top. So we're gonna go ahead and make that today. And melon pan is definitely something commonly found in anime, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to make this melon pan together with none other than the expert herself. We're gonna be using the recipe directly from our cookbook today, so I will be playing more of an assistant role. In a little measuring cup, we have have 120 milliliters of a whole milk, which I'm going to be assigned to microwave until the milk is about 115 degrees. It should feel hotter than a hot shower if you were to dip your hand into it. Then we're going to add half a tablespoon of granulated sugar and one teaspoon of active dry yeast into the milk. Give that a nice stir and set aside until it becomes foamy, which is about 10 minutes or so. Now for the dry ingredients. In a large bowl, we're combining two cups of all-purpose flour, one large egg, which has been whisked, and the other half tablespoon of granulated sugar. Now we're going to pour over that nice yeast mixture and mix until it is combined. Once this has become a shaggy dough, Rie is going to handle work in the dough while I assist with some bench flour, sprinkling it in as necessary. Rie is showing me how to knead this dough back and forth using a heart technique where you push it left then you push it right, slowly kneading the dough and not giving it too much work. I have now been delegated the role of sleeve puller as Rie tends to have her long sleeves kind of bunch up after she rolls for a while. It is now my one and only duty to make sure that her sleeves are pulled up. Once the dough is starting to look good, we're going to slowly add in butter. This is about a tablespoon of butter, cut into little cubes and room temperature so that they can be kneaded into the dough. I'm slowly pressing in one tiny cube of butter at Rubier's instructions while she continues to knead the dough together. Usually this kind of dough I would expect to be made in a stand mixer, but Rie says that you can definitely do this by hand if you don't have a stand mixer at home, and I respect the fact that she's doing this manually because it is a lot of work. But with the power of teamwork and after about 10 or so minutes of kneading this dough together by hand, the butter has incorporated beautifully and now we have a nice beautiful round shiny sticky ball of dough. Rie is now allowing me to take a crack at this dough rolling it back and forth and I'm just shocked at how smooth and soft and supple this dough is for being a hand rolled dough. I guess her recipes are just that good. Now Rie is showing me a nice little acorn rolling technique to get this dough into a nice little ball shape without having to stretch and push the dough underneath as usual bread dough's recipes call for. Look at that nice little dough baby. Show that to the camera Rie. Oh, that's, yeah, that, oh yeah, there it is. This dough is going into a oiled bowl and let to rest and proof for about one hour, covered in plastic wrap to make sure that none of the other stuff in the air gets in. While the dough proofs, we're going to go ahead and make the cookie topping. This is probably the most signature part of what makes melon pan melon pan. For this cookie dough mixture, we're going to whisk together two tablespoons of room temperature butter with two tablespoons of granulated sugar until it is nice and a little aerated. Then we're going to add one large egg, whisked and added in two additions so that the egg has in time to incorporate. If you add it in all at once, Rie says that it can kind of get lumpy and that's not what you want. Then we're going to sift in 2 thirds cup of all-purpose flour and a quarter cup of almond flour. Mix that until now we have a nice little cookie dough paste. Cooking with Rie side by side in front of the camera is honestly giving me flashbacks to the years we had together just making videos and making food together. And honestly, it's a good feeling to have again. Then as per Rie's instructions, we're going to take this mixture and press it between two pieces of saran wrap or one large folded pieces of saran wrap until it is nice and thin and somewhat in a rectangular shape. Once after using a rolling pin and rolling this out to a thin and even layer about a quarter of an inch thick, this is going to go onto a tray and go into the fridge to harden and chill. Now that our dough has been resting for about one hour or so, it is now my duty to punch this dough down. Bam. 
Now we're going to take this dough out and divide it evenly, because now it is a two-person game. Yuri is going to take half of the dough, and I'm going to take half of the dough. But the difference is that I'm going to be taking all my dough and making one large melon pun, where she's going to make four normal-sized ones. Yuri said that the goal here is to take the dough and sort of shimmy it into a small and smooth ball, not overworking it too much and not stretching the gluten too much either. More like coaxing the dough into a small, smooth ball. Once her four little buns are ready, and once my large bun is ready, we're going to go ahead and work with the cookie dough again. She's going to take half, I'm going to take the other half. We're going to try and make a rectangular square patch that is evenly going to coat the top of our buns. Rie says that using parchment paper to sort of press this down is kind of a fail-safe way to do this because then you can just peel the parchment paper off on the bun, almost pressing the dough as a nice little hat over the top. Once the cookie dough has been plastered on top of our buns, we're going to take a little plate of turbinado sugar and invert our buns so that the cookie dough topping gets to have a nice helpful pressing of that turbinado sugar. Let's see if I can get it with my large bun? Oh hey, that doesn't look too bad at all. To create that signature powder scene on Melon Pond, Rie is using a knife to kind of score the top a little bit. Not cutting into the dough itself, just more like creating a pattern in the top of the cookie dough sugar area. When the buns proof and bake and expand, this is going to create a beautiful craggly pattern on the top of the bun that gives the Melon Pond its signature look. After she's done making her patterns on hers, I'm going to go ahead and make a diamond pattern on mine, using a knife and not really cutting into it, but more like rolling the knife from blade to tip over the top of the bun, creating a nice little indent pattern. Rie seems to like what I've done with mine. I do too, it looks pretty cool. Oh my god, it's better than mine. Now our buns are going to go on a separate tray to make sure that they can proof for another 45 minutes to an hour until they are ready to bake. Rie is proud of the approach that I've taken. I will say it does feel good to be validated by someone who's Japanese when I'm making a Japanese recipe for the first time. Once they have grown probably about 25 to 30% more, they're going to go directly into the oven. We're going to put both batches of buns in the oven at 350 degrees, but because hers are smaller, hers are going to come out earlier. Hers took about 15 minutes, which mine took about 20 to 25. Rie's recipe takes the buns out when they're slightly golden, but I wanted to see how much I could brown the top of my cookie topping, so I left mine in at a convection bake for about 5 extra minutes more than it should have, just to see if we can get it extra crispy. I will say, both of ours look pretty good. We're going to go ahead and start with Rie's buns first. What a beautiful pattern on top. It does kind of resemble a melon, or a pineapple, or a concha. Try these open. Look how soft these things are. I'm so pumped with excitement at the prospect of eating these directly from the oven. Oh yeah, show the camera. Oh, yep. Yeah, closer. Closer. There we go. Ray has now made this bread talk to the camera. Let's give this a taste. There's really nothing quite like the taste of freshly baked buns out of the oven. They're warm, they're fluffy, the bun is not so sweet, but the cookie topping adds a nice sweetness and a slight little crunch that makes the bun all worth it. Super, super, super delicious. Demolish these in like five seconds. Yes, this is a bun worth dancing for. A happy dance. Okay, now for the one that's slightly overbaked and a little crispy. These are the size of our hands for reference. Here we go, this is mine. I kind of went for a diamond pattern because I thought it kind of resembled more of what I saw at the 7-Eleven in Japan. I'm quite happy to say that it looks kind of close, although theirs is a lot cheaper, I'm guessing. It was like a dollar when I went. It was so good and so cheap, I ate like one every day. Okay, enough rambling. Let's tear this open. Oh wow, look at that steam. Oh, yep. Yeah. Looks like, uh, looks like Rie wants to play bumper cars with my melon pun, but you can clearly see the distinction between the bun and the cookie topping on this one. It's also cool that you can kind of break these by its diamond patterns and it tells you how to eat the bun. Because I baked mine for a little bit longer, the cookie dough topping was a lot more crunchy in this one, which gives a more separate distinction from the one that Rie made. It always makes things better than me. Different. <laughs> Thank you, Rie, for coming by, and thank you for creating such a beautiful book for all of us to enjoy. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.